Hello, it's a pleasure welcoming you to another feature on the program Community Reports. From May 1967 to July 1975, Brigadier Mobilaji Johnson held sway as the governor of Nigeria's Commercial Nerve Center, Lagos. Between October 1979 and December 1983, Lagos had the first civilian governor from the United Party of Nigeria, Alaji Latif Jakonde. We are not discussing their tenure, but something not many people have paid attention to. Did you know that Alaji Latif Jakonde lived in the same house before he became governor, lived in the same house while as a governor, and have lived there till date? Well, we are turning our focus this week to a community where these two governors live. In the same community, we have noticed many prominent Nigerians. It's also a community that is so unassuming. Also, many of them who have lived there have done so for upward of 30 years and are not contemplating living any soon. Where is this community? Who are these people? Why has it become an education hub for schools? Well, sit back and enjoy this feature on Ilukweju. I'm your host, Olu Phillips. Five divisions characterized the old Lagos, namely Ikorodu Division, Badagri Division, Lagos Division, Ekbe Division, and of course, the Keja Division. These five divisions will later give way to the 20 local government area and lately, the 37 local council development area. Driving through Ikorodu Road, you may not reckon that an old but well-kept estate lies on the shoulders of the road between Antony bus stop and Obanikoro bus stops. These two exits are amongst the several major navigations to get in and out of the Liquidu, which is one of the unique selling points of the estate. One thing that makes the Liquidu unique in all of Nigeria, it has something that no other community in Nigeria has, and I make proud to say this. And this has existed since I first moved here in the 70s. The Liquidu is the only community of its size that has three major expressways traversing it that can get you to anywhere in Lagos or anywhere in Nigeria with within a two-minute access. Ilukweju is the only community. We have Ikorodu Road bisecting that. That's the major thoroughfare out of Lagos to the rest of Nigeria. It also goes to the island. We have Apapa Oworoshoki Expressway on that side, which takes you also to Ibadan, to Third Mainland, to Apapa, to the expressway that way. We also have Agege Motor Road that runs through Mushi all the way. Any of those three expressways can get you to the international airport in five minutes. Ilupeju is the only community in the whole of Nigeria that has three major expressways. So we are centrally located. For that reason, this place attracts people. It attracts people who um, are interested in a middle class quiet community life. Here we are in the middle of Ilupeju on a busy work day and you see how quiet it is. It's like you're in suburban Lagos, not like you're in the middle of the hurly-burly, uh, chaotic atmosphere of a metropolis. Here you are in the middle of a metropolis, but you've got the serenity of a suburb. The neighborhood, which has existed for over three decades, have managed to remain consistent to the ideas and ideals of the founders or the early settlers to whom today's dwellers and settlers consider as faithful elders that will not turn a weak eye to anything that represents a departure from the vision they had. Maybe we should give a lot of credit to the initial settlers, the people that started the Lukwaju, that came in from everywhere to build their houses, and uh, started because early enough, I think they were able to start the community life. The Lupeju Resident Association was started early enough, and it made effort to bring in even the police station was as, as a result of their effort. So 
and uh, perhaps that was the beginning of the uh, community uh, life in, in, uh, in Lukeju, which uh, to the glory of God has extended till now. It's, it may not be as strong now as it used to be, but it's still there. Another thing is that Lukeju is central enough in uh, Lagos, you, you, you can get to the airport in 10, 15 minutes and you can get to the island in 15, 20 minutes. So it's an area where people have easy access and that is making it attractive. We have some very strong um, elders in Ilukweju who uh, have insisted that they will not allow industries to be brought into the, the residential area of Ilukweju. Like to the extreme left, further down are the banks, the warehouses, etc., etc. But all along the street are predominantly residential and little, little organizations that are quiet, not the noisy banking, you know, in terms of safety. I remember there was even a time there was a case on um, a bank, the new bank on Cooker Road, and some people kicked against it and said, the grandchildren are always riding the bicycle. They do not want the area, uh, the situation where grandchildren are on the bicycle in the evenings and armed robbers are shooting because it's, res it's no more fully residential. For instance, armed robbers won't come here because they know nothing like cash is being transacted. Tailors, seamstresses, little, little eateries, they've all been limited to, I mean, the big eateries have been limited to Cooker Road, but all along the residential, they, there's still some very strict people who still write to government to say they do not want commercial.